Let's delve deeper into the outlook for the Africa continental free trade area in 2021. We're now joined by Louis Afoul. He is the group executive director for the AFCFTA Policy Network in Ghana. He joins us now in Accra. Great to have you on the show with us, sir. Now, so far, 54 nations have signed uh, the agreement, but only 34 have deposited uh, instruments of ratification. And of course, about 41 have submitted their tariff offers. Now, do you think this is enough to kick off a commercially meaningful uh, start of trading in 2021? Thank you for having me. And good evening to your viewers and listeners across the globe. Yes, initially, 22 actually was needed to make the agreement come into force. And so back in 2020, May 2020, the agreement was in force after the 22nd country submitted the letters of ratification or the letters of instrument to the AUC. And so, yes, now beyond 22, we are good to go. And also, it's important for us to understand that one of the most important things that we needed was the, the rules of origin. And the rules of origin is about 82% ready. And so to go with the current party states who are ready to trade, I think we are good to go. Mm. That's certainly positive news, uh, Mr. Full, but experts do say they still expect a long and tough road ahead, uh, given that there's still a lot of progress to be made uh, in areas such as tariff negotiations. What for you are going to be the toughest hurdles to overcome uh, before we start to see some tangible results? In practical terms, real trading will start maybe in about four months to come. It's going to be a ceremony launch tomorrow because one, the certificates of origin must have a unique nature of after. And this must be communicated to the custom authorities of various party states. That is in the process, but I don't think overwhelmingly that is fully ready. Again, I foresee the issue of uh, trade facilitation. There is a need for um, border or institutional liberalization, whereby we didn't have certain activities taking place at one party state country and they go to the other border, it's differently spelled out over the no. That will cause a lot of confusion. There is a need for that to synchronize and liberalize institutions. Whatever happens at the borders at country A should be the same applicable in country B. We are yet to get to that side too. Another factor that we foresee is the issue of, in terms of the Pan-African payment system, where traders, especially the informal trade, would like to transact using that payment platform, whereby you can pay using your own uh, domestic currency for whatever supplies or products to the other party state. We also foresee a situation whereby we are going to look at the issues of uh, um, certain existing agreements between, uh, what do you call it? Those who are non-state actors or non-state parties, like those you just said who have not yet fully become members. How are they going to trade with those who are state actors? Yes, there was a system whereby they were given a certain application form to fill. Right. In other words, if you are not a state party, you have to apply to be given a certain period to participate and to enjoy the tariff liberalization. These are things we foresee. Well, we do have to leave it there, but thank you so much for your insights, Mr. Afoul. Of course, that's Mr. Louis Afoul joining us there from the AFCFTA Policy Network.